I was in graduate school at Vanderbilt in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I had taught school uh, in a little country school in Ozone, Tennessee for two years after graduating from Maryville College. And um, so after, was it? after I finished the two years in Ozone, I thought well, it was a bit time to get back into a little bit larger world than with a mountain community with, what, maybe 300 people. Uh, so I started a master's degree at, at Vanderbilt and went to a, a worship at a, a, maybe a Methodist student center. And one day I noticed on the bulletin board a little sign saying, uh, we have a trip to, uh, there'll be a, a group going to Chicago for an RS1 course. This was in the springtime. It was, must have been it was close to Easter, I think. I think it was Palm Sunday, yeah. It was Palm Sunday weekend of 19... 66. Hmm. Yes, because I went back then to summer 66. So that was, I was there for that weekend. I do remember that quite well. I want to hear about that a little bit. Um, I remember, some of the things I remember was Frank Hager did the church lecture. And um, I think Marilyn Oyer, I'm not sure about, no, 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 Marilyn Oyer wasn't, wasn't there yet. Um, but I remember, uh, I remember, I, I really thought Grace Miller was great. And uh, <laughs> uh, I remember Sunday morning, I guess, when we were having, it was a huge RS1, and we had breakfast in room A, and I noticed the people serving it were the members of this community. It was the first I understood anything about this community of the order. And then I went home, and I, I went back to my alma mater, Maryville College, and I remember somehow speaking with Esther Swenson, who was a really very sharp theologian from McCormick that she was teaching, she was teaching at Maryville. And I, I said to her, I had been in a course of hers, and she talked about the remnant. And I said, Dr. Swenson, I found the remnant. <laughs> And you know, then I went back to summer 66, and uh, Judy, Jim Weagle's sister, Judy Weagle, and I were in the same group there. Uh, in the teachers, we had the Teachers Training Institute, I guess it was. And that was taught by Donna McCleskey, Sue Burdick, and Pat Scott. Those were the three leaders. Um, and we had in it lots of great people. Uh, Judy Weagle, as I said, um, Jerry and Irene, maybe Abraham, a very tall priest whose name was Jeff something, Kay Ent, uh, Marilyn Miller, two Marilyn Millers, I guess. The one became Euler, and who was the other one? Marilyn. I can't remember. Um, and um, Jim, Jim Campbell, and Rob Work, I think. Mm. Rob might not have been in that one, but in any case, he may, or was in one of the other groups. But in any case, Rob and I were assigned to obedience together. We mocked the old chapel. And ever, I've always felt very close to Rob since that time. I remember in that summer, one of our work days was to carry down mattresses from the attic for some reason. I don't know what it was. Anyhow, when that summer was over, this was summer 66 was over, I went, I went to Atlanta, to Decatur, where I lived with my parents at first. I remember first talking at the end of the RS1, standing on the steps and talking to Frank Higgard about, you know, he said, oh, you ought to come up here or something. And I said, well, I needed to be with my parents. And, but I, then I remember he had, he had, uh, 
I think in the church lecture before that he was, said this thing from Luke, what we heard yesterday, in today's gospel. Go to hell, Mama. Go to hell. Anyhow, I can't say it out loud now because some people might not understand. <laughs> anyhow, Frank was, that, that was always in the back of my mind, sort of challenging it. But anyhow, I decided I, I was going to Decatur, and there I had a got a job. I lived with my folks in suburban Atlanta for a little while and had a job teaching at Morris Brown College, one of the four black colleges which is part of the Atlanta University. Um, and I remember uh, I, somehow I met some cadre in Atlanta, people who were connected to the institute and I went way across town to go to church with them. And I remember once Charles Hahn came in to do some sort of course. Anyhow, all those details, maybe it's... Actually, no, all during that year, and then the following summer, I was, I was always, had in the I, back of my mind, the idea that I'd go back to Chicago. And what attracted me was this idea of the remnant, I think. It was definitely the, the, uh, the community that attracted me, the, the the thought that a discipline, you could you could live in a disciplined community. One simple thing I remember, it seemed very seductive to be able to have your your financial affairs going in the direction you wanted them to go in, you know? So I remember feeling, one of the things I felt bad about with my parents was there was no way to do a budget do, you know, to do their budget and to do my budget and somehow I felt I should be in a different community where my money was going the right way. <laughs> Complicated it became. But what attracted me about that? The community attracted me. The idea of a kind of total commitment, discipline and so forth. The, the whole RS1 um, discourse and, and exercise uh, I found very exciting in a way it didn't disturb me it didn't really turn my theology or my language upside down so much I didn't feel I always felt I'd had a very enlightened Sunday school program in the um, Presbyterian Church and uh, we had we had Robert McCaffrey Brown and like really good book, the Bible speaks to you. Now, I felt it was in, in, in my Maryville College, though very conservative. By the way, Lynn Matthews went there for a year, and she found it really too conservative for her. And a lot of people found it too, you know, had to go to chapel every day and stuff. Anyhow, I felt that that was sound and that it wasn't narrow. But the RS1 gave you a different way to talk about things. And of course, that was very attractive to me. Yeah, I think it was a, basically it was a way to live.